changing your destiny is not easy at all. You may have to switch so many lanes. But how you change it? We choose our character with a free will. So what exactly free will is? What I want in life. He needs to have some kind of purpose in life. What if I tell you that your free will is not what you think? What if self-control, habits, intuition would be your superpower? This week, I had a fantastic guest at the Energy Lab podcast, Ambreen Nadim. Ambreen is a psychologist and founder of the Psychology Talks. She's passionate about helping people in understanding psychology in the day-to-day -day life. She talks about mental health, provides knowledge in blogs, podcasts, live shows to educate and help people to improve themselves. She's also the author of The Algorithm of Life. Sit back, relax and enjoy the conversation with Ambreen. You need to have that passion to pursue your goals. Change your simple habits. So you need to train your brain. That, that is the main reason people actually give up. Hello, Ambreen. Great to see you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. And thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. It's very, uh, I'm very happy to have you on the Energy Lab podcast. We had a wonderful conversation a few weeks ago. Um, yeah. Then I decided to grab your book and I needed to invite you. So I really <laughs> had Thank no you. choice because I really felt like we have so, so many common topics and I'm, I'm following your content. You have much valuable messages mm -hmm. that you're spreading. So I want to give you uh, another chance with uh, other people listening to our podcast. Cool. So I would love to start with a personal question, but not too personal, of course. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ambreen, what's your superpower? Yeah, I mean, that's an amazing question. And uh, I think everybody has some superpowers, but they, they need to just explore. And what I think is that my superpower, which I mean, I would just say is my passion. Passion to uh, find the truth passion to find knowledge. And uh, like, as Einstein said that, you know, I'm not uh, talented or I'm not uh, having some special talent. I'm just passionately curious. And I feel I can so much relate to what you said, because um, when I start to study something, I love to find out more and more. And that passion comes basically from the soul that ignites your soul, that fires the uh, desire to actually uh, find out more about the topic, about uh, the field. So I think that is my superpower. <laughs> That's a wonderful one because that curiosity of learning, it opens up all the doors that we want, right? So Absolutely. if you put yourself in something and you are a learner in your mindset, mm -hmm. then I think there is no, I don't know, probably there are other super, super power, but this mm -hmm. is one that can unlock and leverage so much of what, whatever you you are interested into, and and of Absolutely. course the, the topics mm -hmm. you you're talking about are very purposeful and as well helping many people. So I think the more we top tap into our uh, superpower and the purpose, and we align it, the more we can thrive and really do great stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I had one topic that I. I enjoy talking about last time with you and also I find a um, chapter in your book um, which is talking about breaking that illusion of control yeah so maybe uh, th there is a sentence that I wrote down and I want yeah. to quote because for me this was like okay I need to uh, to understand what's you know the gap between what probably most of us think and uh, what is your point of view so uh, if all physic physical laws proficiencies and logical answers claim that our actions are controlled and predetermined. What is the role of control and free will in our life? Yeah, that's actually the main, like you asked the main essence of my book because that, <laughs> that, that is the reason why I was uh, uh, motivated to write the book because that question troubled me a lot. <laughs> that what is in our control if everything is predetermined by physical laws and if you read different sciences, like right, you know, like neurosciences also tells us that our mind actually uh, takes a decision even before it comes to our consciousness. So, like you know, if everything works in a way that 
creates an illusion of control then but what actually is in our control so i actually was um, happy to actually find an answer i mean of course this is my perspective it could be uh, you could not uh, agree to it or you could agree to it uh, that's up to you but that's kind of my explanation to what it is so in my book i've actually written that um the free free will like you know a lot of people think that they have but it it's if they don't understand what exactly free will is they've been following the same thing on kind of an autopilot mode and they 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 think that they're choosing with their free will but it's actually not so what exactly free will is so <clears throat> here i would quote uh, shakespeare you know because that actually got me thinking about it so shakespeare wrote in his uh, play as you like it he said that this world is a stage and all of us come to this world and play our role and then exit okay so to me uh, what it is is uh, that the, the entire world i mean the story or the script of the entire world or the you know from the beginning to the end is written in complete detail right you cannot change it like big bang was meant to happen and it's going to go in the same way it is happening right so you cannot change anything in that but what you can change is as uh, shakespeare said that you know uh, this world is a stage and we come into the world and play our character so here is our role is that we choose our character with a free will so each of us come into this world with some kind of destiny right we are born into the world with, like in certain circumstances with certain capabilities and we have certain role to it right so <clears throat> that destiny is given to us but when we come into the world when we gain the consciousness and when we know that what's happening then we can choose either to follow the same destiny or we change our path okay so now the question is that how we can change the path <laughs> because if we want to follow if we don't want to follow the same path how would, uh so my um, concept is like you know if um, i've given in the in my book also i've given the example of train tracks right so like if you just imagine that like each and every role is each and everything is decided it's written in the world okay so all of this like you just imagine that these are like a train tracks people are born into a track and if they follow the same track it's just like the train uh, leaves from point a to point b so if the train is meant to be on track a it will follow the same um track anyways right it cannot change anything so on the on that track whatever the circumstances whatever the incident whatever events are meant to happen it will happen you will experience this and you will just keep following the same track right and you may think that okay this is my role and i have been choosing my uh, destiny no it's not basically because you're just following the same track but how you change it is basically if something happens and you said no i don't want that right for example if someone is uh, born in let's say a less privileged environment right and they said you know i don't want to follow the same uh, destiny i want to be more uh, happy more uh, i would want to have more abundance in life but his destiny was not meant to be like that <laughs> like for example so what he said the first thing is that he needs to realize that he needs to say what i want in life he needs to have some kind of purpose in life right okay i want that thing let's say okay whatever it is and then what you need to do is once you realize the purpose then you need to have um the kind of desire to follow it right like for example you have a uh, lot of people have dreams right they they want to have they want to achieve so many things but what they do is is they they give up on their dream right because it is okay it's not possible for example if if i'm giving you the example if the someone is born in a less privileged way uh, environment and he wants to achieve so much abundance in life his rational mind might think that you know it's not possible it's whatever he's thinking it's not possible and then he just kills the, uh, his dream so you know it there was nothing this not going to happen 
but he thinks that yes he can achieve it and he wants to do it so he will just what do it he would add more emotions to it he will add he will have that kind of passion that i actually talked about uh, just uh, a while ago that desire burning desire that passion will made him act right that he would maybe just say okay i don't want this destiny i want some more information i want to let's say have abundance like i i want to maybe study more or i want to achieve uh, a degree in something or whatever like for example just let's um, let's have uh, let, maybe he wants to become an entrepreneur right and to have a company or something like that so with given circumstances he could not even think of it that he, with in this kind of resources he could have it but what he would do it if he has that kind of passion he would look for some in, information about it and he would look some look for some guidance or something so that passion will propel him to do some uh, to uh, to perform some act to g- g- gain some information to uh, get some advice from the people and that's when you will see that you know that that destiny or what he was following he will just switch the destiny he will swap from one track to another and that's when you see that you know uh the miracles happen if and i have seen it with hundreds of people like with whomever i have spoken to once they have decided about following a certain passion certain um purpose in life they start having people in their life from like out of nowhere right they start having this and that's how you become the creator of the miracles in life and again one more thing i would point out here that it's not always the maybe a well desired um, maybe act for example you may meet someone who could be very toxic or you may end up in some a disaster but that disaster is be uh, will be there to give you some lesson which preparing you to actually uh have uh, to lead you to the, the the purpose that you want or to the destiny that you want so that's how you will just swap the lane you will not be able to change the anything on the destiny which is on the same track but what you will do is you swap the des- uh, the 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 track and how you do it with like you with the with maybe the 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 events that was supposed to happen in that track you will attract those events in your life and that's when like as i mentioned that you know you will have that miracle uh, you will have those miracles or maybe a disaster also but that's how you can you will be switching the lanes and then it will now it will just, you will you need to have that kind of patience and a believe in yourself and believe in the plan that okay that it, it's going to lead you to the uh, to the purpose you may have to switch so many lanes it's not because it depends at how far your goal is right how far your purpose is you may meet with someone who will may teach you something then you have to switch that lane so you have to keep on swapping lanes till you reach your destiny so it's up to you that how much you are willing to endure how much you're willing to learn from the experience that the uh the nature or this is given you so i mean in brief i just shared that how uh, it can be uh, intentionality i think yes. it uh, plays a good role and as well that belief that you just said yeah. like i need i can relate a lot to this because uh, i was born and grew up in a humble family but uh, i like i was the first one to study i i was like you know we say like the black sheep of the family more or less mm-hmm. so i was all, always different even if i didn't have an example any role model and i remember once a professor invited me to talk to the school where i studied to give the the people that were more or less in my situation to give them another perspective that their destiny could have been different like said yeah. now with your words and uh, and when i was telling about what i did and at that time i was working as a sales manager for a company and a corporate and I, you know i had a successful career and everything and one professor from from the other side said you know 
it's easy for you to to tell this because you had the money to do this and all those guys they don't have any chance mm-hmm. and i didn't have the money i look for yeah. chances you know i i didn't have the money to do what i did of course i had some help but i needed to find a way to get that money you know yeah. and i needed to work hard to build the career i wanted so the message and the encouragement and the belief plus the intentionality can make our lane change from X to Y, like in a completely different way. So it's, uh, yeah, that's a lot of intentionality behind it. So yes. I can totally relate. a lot of hard work, a lot of belief, a lot of patience. And I mean, it, um, it changes life, like changing your destiny is not easy at all. You need a lot of hard work. You need to be persistent on your goal. There will be like a lot of people who would come to you. As, as you said that, you know, people will come and say, oh, it's you haven't done this before. You don't know this. Or maybe even if you reach there and if you prove them that you are successful, people will say, oh, you're just lucky. And, that was, yes. and like, you know, it hurts. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> we have worked so hard on it. We were the one who actually change the destiny and I tell you that I came I come from a very humble background as well like you know um, the reason why I actually wrote this book is basically um, uh, I, I I was depressed at some time like when I was a teenager like you know my my uh, father lost the job and then um, we had faced a lot of financial uh, crisis and you know at that time, I was very depressed and, and kind of like suicidal. And then, you, you know, and then being uh, uh, like I used to read palm also. And so yeah, I used to predict futures. And it's like, oh, my God, if everything is predestined in the lines of palm, how can we actually change it? And that was the main reason I, was, I used to get depressed. But then I found out this kind of um, uh this concept you know that no we can change our destiny yes and then i at that point in time i decided that i need to write the book and i need to tell people that they can but because i know that a lot of people who have been suffering from the same kind of um, depression or same kind of anxiety that when they go through certain setbacks uh, they think that their life is over. It's going to be on the same track. But I want to tell people that, no, it's not going to be like this. You are in charge and you can change your life whenever you want. It may take time. It's not going to happen overnight. It will take a lot of hard work. It will uh, take a lot of sacrifices. But again, it will happen. You need to have that belief. Absolutely. That leads me to talking about the belief and the change as well to the other point that a question I wanted to ask you, self-control and discipline. Yeah. But somehow I related to the, how you get there to change your destiny, right? Yeah. So my question is to you is how can we master ourself, our self-control to have better lives, businesses, and also be better aligned with ourselves? How can we do that? Yeah, it, it's a very good question, actually, because without discipline, I think it's nothing's going to happen because discipline molds our, you know, personality, paves the way towards our destiny, right? Or the destination. Uh, it's it's definitely not easy because our mind is, uh, is designed in a way that, you know, follow the path, which is like, uh, it's going to be... Uh, the same way, like, you know, it, it comes, it, it prefers a homeostasis uh, state, right? That, you know, whatever is happening is going to be in the same way. And we come into the comfort zone where you said, okay, that's fine. It's going to happen. That's fine. And once something works out, you get into the comfort zone that, okay, it's going to go the same way. And you don't want to change that, you know, uh, thing. But discipline is the thing uh, that, keeps you on the track, on your goal, and then uh, lead you to your uh, goal. And how you do that is you need a lot of practice for that. <laughs> it's not easy again, because uh, as I mentioned, our mind is designed in a way that it prefers the state of comfort or it prefers the state of routine you know it's the same thing it's like you know you just do it you put it in the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is taking care of it like you have this habits of getting up in the morning let's say if you are in the habit of getting up 
uh, morning and late, you will prefer to stay in the bed till let's say 10 or 11 and then you get up and have maybe like to eat some junk and then go and take uh, binge watching Netflix or something. So if that kind of comfort zone you have created for you, it would be so difficult to come out from this to work for it. The main thing is, again, I would say you need to have some motivation to change it, right? If there is no motivation, you would keep following that, okay? Like you say, why should I actually change it if I'm so much uh, in a comfort zone? So you need to have certain goal. If you have that goal, and again, it will, I will just go back that you need to have that passion to pursue your goal. If you don't have enough desire to change your current situation, then definitely it's not going to happen. And that's why we see a lot of people uh, always uh, write their um, uh, goals. Let's say every year they write their goals that they're going to have, they, they will achieve this, this, this in this year. And after one month, they lose the motivation and say, okay, they don't even remember what they've written in their goals. <laughs> do, you, do you talk about the famous New Year's resolution that everybody yes. is soon going to start with again? <laughs> Almost the end, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And then they I'll always forget that, you know, everybody say, oh, I want to lose five kg in, let's say, in two months and this. And then they do start with the enthusiasm. And then what happens is they completely forget about it. So what the, what you want to do is, again, you need to have that kind of um, uh, passion to follow your goal. Then you need to change your simple habits of, you know, I, I always say the big change happens through the small, consistent uh, action. Like, uh, for example, if you want to achieve um, a, a certain goal, wh whatever it is, then you need to change your current habits. Let's say maybe if you are in a habit of getting up late, you need to make a habit that you get up early in the morning. If you are binge watching, let's say Netflix or something, you need to replace it with the reading of books or something, which is which gives you inspiration or something which leads you to your goal. And and you need to you you cannot change bring those big changes, like say you cannot uh, completely uh, stop watching Netflix, you cannot start uh, uh, maybe uh, getting up early in the morning every day. So you need to just write it down. Okay, this is how it's going to be done. But you do it slowly and gradually because all those habits wasn't formed. Uh, well, all those habits were not formed in one day, right? It mm -hmm. took a long time. So it will take a long time to even replace it. So slowly and gradually, you need to train your brain to inculcate these habits into your daily routine. You start getting up, let's say, if if you want to achieve, uh, you get up at 5 and now you're getting up at 10 a.m., try just reducing a little, little time. Maybe you start getting up at 8 o'clock and then uh, when, when you develop that habit, then reduce more time. If you want to read more books, don't start uh, reading for one hour, which will makes you more tired and boring. So... <laughs> Start make, uh, taking some small steps. Maybe you start uh, reading five minutes a day, right? Mm. It takes a time. And then you gradually increase because once you get into that uh, mode, then it will be easier to uh, go for the next step. And give yourself a grace that, okay, it's not going to happen overnight, okay? What happens is like people think that uh, I'm not able to do it. They just quit it completely. No, it's not. It's like we are humans, we do mistakes, it takes time. So if it's not happening, even in let's say one month, try doing it again. Take some time off. If you think that it's not happening, take a break. Go as per your, like, you know, as you know your body that how it responds. And as per your, uh, uh, your uh, like uh, space, uh, 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 pace. Uh, like wh whatever, like your body is accepting, go through this. It's not, don't be harsh on yourself that, you know, like that, that is the main reason people actually give up that they mm -hmm. think it's not happening. They, they just quit it. And then they don't look back. They say, Oh, it's so difficult. I can't do it. 
it's it's okay to fail it's okay to do mistake it's okay that if it's not happening but do it consistently it will take time nothing happens overnight so yeah. that's my point like you know you need to train it slowly gradually and go on your pace Yeah, but it's kind of reprogramming your own Absolutely. system, right? It's about, uh, of course, uh, we're talking so many times about the things you do with your body, but everything starts from your mind. So reprogramming our mind and do that like from one day to the other, and then you're right, like completely. The the changes, the big changes, to always take time, and most of the times we're not patient. We want everything happening right away. Ideally yesterday, but since yesterday didn't yeah. happen, then uh, I need to quit, you know? So that, yeah. that's something that um, probably our younger generation, like as well, my generation, or, you know, uh, probably yours have more troubles with this because we are, and, and the younger one even more, because yeah. we are kind of used to this um, quick reactions and we don't really give us our, ourselves the time. And you mentioned as well, another good point, it's listening to our body what our body tells us and, and getting that alignment between our mind and our body, which I believe is, uh, is yeah. key in all things, uh, personal development, well-being. Absolutely. So you kind of answered to my other question, which was, <laughs> can we consciously reprogram our behavior? And actually, as you said, it's all about those habits and, and finding a way that it's good for you. Probably it's yeah. not good for me and not for somebody else, but it's really like having something which is, from person to person yeah yeah I, especially you said that you know we need to align our mind and body this is so important that uh, especially when we talk about passion a um, lot of people what they do is that um, they always follow what other people tell them to right it is so important to connect with yourself to find out what your passion is and like a lot of people I've seen that you know they may be in the wrong place following the wrong career and something. But that doesn't mean that they need to quit their career and start following your passion. That's fine. If they, if they have built the career, they cannot quit it like this. You just start adding your passion into your life so you feel good. And, and that's how when you follow your passion, and that means you are meant to, be, to perform a certain role in the, this world, then you actually get into that. And then when you realize that your passion, then you start following that, you know, what you want to do. You will feel, I mean, when, when you follow or when you do uh, what your passion is, you will feel, I mean, a great joy, a fulfillment, something that, you know, and, and that joy, for that joy, you wouldn't need any external validation because that validation comes from your within So that's very, very important to have the alignment between mind and body. Yeah, I completely relate to this. Yeah. And when we don't feel that, then probably we need to ask ourselves a couple of questions, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Intuition. So I think like <laughs> that's one of my favorite topics lately. Me too. Um, so while I was going through the algorithm of life, I'm... I, I noticed the connection you also do with intuition that it's kind of protecting us, right? It's linked yeah. to our well-being. It's kind of a natural thing that we have to help us survive, I believe. Mm -hmm. And many times we kind of misalign or are disconnected with it because yeah. we are so much into... The more we are connected with technology, sometimes the more we're disconnected with ourselves. That's my, my yeah. feeling. So thinking about uh, intuition, how do you think we can all better tap into our intuition to make also better choices? Because if we think about, you know, entrepreneurs or people, business owners, so they need yeah. to make choice and it's not only about rational or numbers, right? Yeah. yeah. So a uh, very good question. And I love intuition and uh, I'm a big fan of intuition. I mean, because when you follow your intuition, it will always lead you to the right direction. And because... Um, so, first of all, what is intuition? Before we actually answer that, how we tap into it. So intuition is a whisper of your soul, is something that you, is um, your, your, your soul is telling you who you are, where you're meant to be, and what you need to do, right? So, a lot of time people actually confuse this voice, what exactly it is. So, just telling you that what exactly like you know our soul is 
is the true self is our soul. Like, you know, the physical self, I believe, is just the avatar of our soul. It's the, it's the way to experience this world. But the true self is our soul. And that soul is energy. And that beyond all these physical laws, right? And, and that's why your soul has all the knowledge about whatever you think of. And that knowledge, you can tap into it when you trust your intuition or trust your soul, right? And that, like, you know, yourself, like your, I would say, your your soul speaks to you in the form of intuition, right? And how you do this, again, it will, I uh, like many times I actually say it my, in my post as well that, um, Soul it speaks to us in the form of feelings, emotions, right? So what you do is it's kind of a when you start something different or when you're meeting with someone for the first time, you have that kind of feeling. You have that kind of sense, right, which is, um, which is not linked to your rational mind. Right. You have sometimes when you you may not, for example, even in my book, I've given the example that, you know, when you're meeting with someone for the first time, you might not even like that person in their appearance or something. But you may be just drawn towards that person. And that is that feeling that is is something is your indication or is the whisper from your soul that, OK, this is something because because of the vibes or because your soul has access to the wider information which your physical or rational uh, mind doesn't have. So you need to listen to it, okay? So how you listen to it, you need to separate the voice of ego from uh, the, so, uh, the, the voice of your intuition. And you, for that also, you need to train your mind to do that. First of all, you need to um, quiet the mental chatter because our mind is always full of thoughts and the chatter. And most of the time, the chatter and this is a just noise, right? You need to turn off that noise. And only then you will be able to differentiate. And the first way is uh, to do meditation. You need to have some quiet silence or like you know solitude in where you can silence all these noise of the world uh, of of the mind whatever is our mind in in our mind right so have that kind of you need to practice let's say at least five minutes a day uh, even I don't do uh, like long hour of meditation but I do spend a lot of time in solitude and myself connecting with myself talking to myself and not giving focus on those mental chatter instead focus on what your uh, focus on the thoughts which can actually give you some cue some indication about about the world about yourself about whatever you want to know right so <clears throat> first thing is meditation quiet your mental chatter find time in solitude and if you want um you can also add some journaling also because that's when give you a completely clear picture of what your mind is filled right now. And then you can just uh, uh, filter out all those noise and you say, okay, no, this is just the voice of the ego. This is a voice of the fear. So this is, uh, these are the techniques. The other thing is that what I also want to highlight is that, you know, when you just differentiate the, the voice of uh, the ego and the intuition is that the, intu the, the voice of intuition is always very subtle and always consistent. You wouldn't um, have that kind of uh, uh, confusion in that voice. Mm. For example, if you have certain feeling about someone let's say, I mean, or uh, our vibes about someone, you will always have that vibe whenever you interact, no matter what. So mm -hmm. that subtle, consistent, it, it is not loud. The, uh, the, the loud voice is basically the voice of your ego, you know, like it is maybe telling you. So whenever, like, for example, when you're journaling your thoughts about, let's say, um, 
when you're meeting with someone and you said, okay, that person, I, you, the inner self is telling you that, that there's something fishy about that person, but maybe the, the, the nothing wrong rationally with that person, right? So when you write down, so you write down that you're something, you're feeling something fishy about it, which doesn't have any rational, which doesn't have any, you keep writing down. If you're journaling it, let's say you have the first meeting, the second meeting, and then you see that, okay, this this thing is still there. So that means something is coming. Uh, the next thing is like, okay, yeah, this consistent thing, then you need to hear that the voice of ego is usually stemmed from the fear, right? Yeah. So, for example, if that person, if you're meeting with that person, right, and you're saying, Maybe the appearances are good. Maybe he's got the very good background or something or something. And then you say, like, oh, there's nothing wrong with that person. And maybe you're drawn toward that person. And then uh, and maybe you feel that, okay, it's a good person or something. And maybe you need to develop a relationship with that person. But then um, the intuition is telling you, no, no, don't go for that, right? And so... Here you need to find out that the loud voice of telling you that, okay, go with that person is based, maybe could be based on your own fear that, okay, this, if you didn't have that kind of a, let's say, background, do you, do you like that background maybe? And maybe that fear of being, losing that thing, which you did not have in the past is something that actually uh snubbing your intuition so with the voice of intuition so like these kind of things and maybe this this here could be the voice of fear that is loud telling you to go with that person but the subtle voice telling you to so th these are the things that you know you need to be careful and you need to train your brain to actually think about it right that what exactly these are the sounds it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen. And of course, you will do some mistakes <laughs> in actually um, finding the voice of your intuition. And you may fall in uh, for some voice of ego many times. But that is that is how you will learn that, okay, that was not the voice of uh, the intuition. That was the voice of the ego. So the that's is, it. Yeah. There is no recipe, right? Yes. <laughs> Okay, like okay, give me like three things I need to do to learn it to tap it. That, that doesn't it doesn't exist, right? Yeah, it would, yes. it would be good. I think like many of us wouldn't do a lot of mistakes while having a perfect recipe, but it's not like creating a meal, right? It's um, yes, exercising yes. it. It's creating and moving that muscle more and more so that you can then uh, learn it. And that's again being intentional about it. Yeah. 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 And, and everyone is different also. You need to, you need to follow your heart. What, uh, I cannot tell you that how your heart tells you. I know <laughs> that what my heart tells you. So, you know, that's what I do. You learn to find out how to listen to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think this is like a lifelong project, yeah. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Self-awareness is actually a lifelong uh, project and, uh, you know, um, uh, it's, uh, I can, I can never tell that I know myself completely, <laughs> not at all, because it's, uh, uh, first of all, we are evolving. Secondly, that we still don't know who we are. I mean, uh, if you ask me, who am I? I'm still in the search of finding out who am I, why I do things the, day, the way I do. So yes, I have invested a lot of time. I know a lot of things about me, but that doesn't mean that I know everything. It's it's a lifelong process. And to be, uh, to be honest, sometimes at, at a stage we meet ourselves and we are surprised with our own self that, okay, that's also another aspect of myself. So, you know, this kind of things going on and on till I think we die. <laughs> Yeah, probably yeah. there is no end. Like usually yeah. a project is at the beginning or an, an end as you you also have uh, expertise in uh, uh, project mm -hmm. management. So you know the definition of it. But I think yeah. here it's the no end. But still it's a continuous improvement. And when we are curious to learn not only the outside world, but as well to learn and understand us better, mm -hmm. then uh, and uh, that's actually 
in my understanding, like I'm uh, really um, amazed, like while I'm reading your book and now you're telling more about it, <laughs> I'm leaving the point, yeah. but uh, it's also your, uh, your purpose, right? It's also your mission, like to help people yeah. to, to get better understanding as well from themselves. And it's a journey that each of us is on, on it. Absolutely. It's really wonderful. Um, yeah, I have a closing question. Yeah. I could talk to you like for hours, but <laughs> I, <laughs> Oh. To close with, uh, where can people find you? Uh, I will put some uh, links in the comments, okay. of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can tell us a little bit okay. what you can connect with you. Yeah, basically, I'm very active on LinkedIn. And I'm also uh, kind of active on other social media as well. I mean, but most active uh, uh, is LinkedIn. So they can just uh, DM me. I will definitely reply to them. I'm also on Insta, Twitter, Facebook. So they can find me there. They can, If, if they want, they can also contact me there. The uh, I also have my website. Uh, the psychologytalks.com so they can also check out my um, work from there that uh, my podcast my youtube channel and everything so uh, this is how they can actually find me on internet <laughs> wonderful thank you so much and it was a pleasure talking to you and going a little bit deeper and definitely reading your book it's a way to go deeper to those topics and uh, i highly suggest to whoever is interesting into improving themselves and being a better person. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ambri. Thank you so much for having me. It's really a, ple a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Stop the recording. Cool. That was really <laughs>